are, are you also looking at beyond the train itself? Are you looking at systems for rapid charging as, as part of the offering, I suppose? So Alstom and Bombardier are now one. Um, the two businesses have, have joined and, and so that brought together a lot of research and development work. Um, traditionally, Bombardier had done a lot of work on, on battery EMUs and, and Alstom is, of course, the world's leader in hydrogen technology. Um, and whilst um, Alstom also offered battery uh, units and we've sold some in Germany, the addition of that extra knowledge and, and expertise is invaluable to sure. developing the future products. And yes, you're absolutely right. Simulation is key to determining the right mix for any particular route um, and the right balance between uh, in a hybrid drive, for example, on a hydrogen train, you might you might want to adjust how much hydrogen you carry or well, you need to forecast how much you're going to need to carry um, alongside the capacity of your battery that works as part of the hybrid and it is providing that additional um, energy store on board. Um, and with batteries, you're interested in range and you're interested in, in charging. One area that we've done, uh, we've got a lot of experience already in this type of technology is in lighter rail systems. So tram systems, for example, where we already have um, fast charging, uh, in road charging, overhead charging. Um, we use supercapacitors, we use batteries. So there's lots of um, experience gained already in that area where, where batteries are particularly useful because of the relatively light weight of the vehicles and the short range between stops so you can charge more frequently. You don't need such a large energy store on board the vehicle. Um, so there's lots of um, lots of background knowledge and expertise being brought to bear as we develop the, the you know the larger scale heavy rail products as we would call them. Yeah, I mean, I, I've mentioned to you before that in, you know it, it seems like where we are now in terms of talking about battery and hydrogen trains is where everyone was 10 years ago in talking about electric cars that you know, 10 years ago, they'll never happen and we'll be capable, there'll be milk floats everywhere. Um, but of course now, nobody's really saying that. So I think, you know, that we need to get to that that position and, and, and range, as you mentioned. So the range anxiety, as it's expressed with cars, um, no doubt will also be a, a, an anxiety or a concern in relation to, to battery trains. And I think when we spoke last, you said that typically the sweet spot of these batteries is about the middle 60% of the battery. Um, and of course, that means there's there's at least twenty percent above and twenty percent below um, in your pockets that that you that you can use the uh, sort of the unused thing if you absolutely need to. Is is that the way the subject works, or is the technology just way beyond it that we don't need to worry about it anymore? The the way you use a battery um, should be managed, and it's kind of. Um, specific to the chemistries of the battery. So um, what we talked about previously was in particularly in relation to the hybrid batteries used in uh, as, as energy stores on board hybrid drives with the hydrogen systems. Yeah. Traction batteries are slightly different um, and uh, are, are, are more attuned to delivering the power necessary to, to operate the train. Uh, the exact charge characteristics, again, are part of what you would simulate as you select the type of battery that you fit to, to your train. So I'd expect potentially different types of battery uh, with different characteristics fitted to a battery train versus a hybrid hydrogen train. Um, and that, that is definitely a factor. Um, yeah. So, so basically what you're saying is that you right size the battery for the particular task that you're going to do. Ideally, that's what you would do, yes, um, and that way you can make sure that the, um, for example, you don't you don't want to carry too much, uh, you don't want excess capacity on board because it's excess weight, um, and and that takes more energy to drive it, and it's a vicious circle then of of how much energy are you using just to transport your battery. Yeah. But we shouldn't forget that range anxiety is also applicable to diesel and petrol. Of course. It's just that we're used to that. Um, we've lived it for donkey's years. In the rail industry, we've tended to put ever bigger tanks on our diesel trains so that we can, if you like, dissociate ourselves from the uh, from that fear of range expiry because we've always carried excess on board. But actually, we've been doing the same problem as having too big a battery. We carry too much weight with us if we're not careful. Yeah. Um, just in it's in a, hundreds of litres of fuel that slosh around but never get effectively used. Um, that's a risk. 
Um, but also the reason you can um, you don't have range anxiety in your car, if it's petrol or, uh, or diesel powered, is the simplicity of refueling it. And it all comes back to that support infrastructure that backs these things up. If you're confident you can recharge your train in a sensible and anticipated period of time at a location you can reach, you needn't have anxiety. Same with your hydrogen train. Your anxieties arise when you don't know where you're going to refuel and you're not planned. And that's not really how the railways operate. So we shouldn't be in positions of uncertainty. We should have right sized systems delivering um, with a, a suitable safety factor or contingency of energy stored on board so that the operators can operate very um, safely and securely and, and reassured in the knowledge that they can deliver the service they're committed to deliver. And at the same time, the contingency is always there for those perturbations to service that can happen or a diversion of routes or whatever else, because these trains will be capable of being diverted, of course, because they won't be dependent on electrification. Yeah. So they need to have the capacity to do that. Yeah.